Saral Japani YouTube channel presents Japanese lessons, a simplified and easy to understand course for the beginners. Hello friends, this is Sujoy Chatterjee and I am here with this new video of this series. Before starting today's lesson, let's quickly summarize what all we have learned so far. The first three lessons were introductory in nature. The first one gave uh, the background and introduction to Japanese language. In the second one, we discussed the sounds in Japanese. The origin and evolution of Japanese scripts were discussed in lesson three. From the fourth lesson, we started learning the hiragana script, the hiragana alphabets, and by the end of lesson six, we were done with it. Lesson seven was related to pronunciation practice and some insights into the importance and significance of intonation in Japanese. Today is the eighth lesson of this series in which we shall learn around 150 Japanese words, their pronunciation, uh, meanings, their spellings in hiragana. This will help to start building the stock of words for framing sentences in the upcoming lessons, and also it will help in pronunciation practice. And also you will come to know the meanings of these common and popular Japanese words which are used in day to day life. So let's go ahead with today's lesson. Hiragana vocabulary, 150 Japanese words, their pronunciation and meanings. Asa, morning. Ashi, leg. Ashita, tomorrow. Ase, sweat. Ahiru, duck. Ari, ant. Isu, chair. Inu, dog. Ishi, stone. Ito, a female child. Usagi, rabbit. Uma, horse. Ue, above. Uta, song. Ushi, cow or bull. Uchi, home. Eki, station. Eno, bay. Ebi, shrimp. Empitsu, pencil. So here, we have written N pits, but when we pronounce it, we replace this N with an M sound, M pits. So this is done in order to make the pronunciation easier. So from the alphabet point of view, it is N, but when we pronounce it, we pronounce it as M. So M pits, that means pencil. Eda, branch of a tree. Oni, a demon. Okash, snacks. Osaka. So this is the name of a Japanese, very famous Japanese city, Osaka. So look at the word written. There are two O sounds. O, Osaka. So this will be pronounced as Osaka. So there will be a stress in the O sound at the beginning. Osaka. Origami. Origami is a very famous art of Japan that deals with paper folding, that is making different kinds of artifacts like flowers and all using paper folding. Omu, parrot. Otera, temple. Ohio, Ohio is good morning. Kani, crab. Kasa. Umbrella, this is the Japanese umbrella, which is again a world famous item and people who go to Japan, they definitely bring umbrella with them. Katsu, katsu is a deep fried cutlet of meat and uh, notice the pronunciation of katsu, it's not katsu, it's katsu. Karasu, similarly, it's not karasu, it's karasu. Karas, the crow. Kaban, bag or briefcase. So this is the na sound that we have been discussing while discussing the 
alphabets. So this is the only sound in Japanese that doesn't come with an with a vowel sound. So this is an independent na sound which is used to write words like kaban, nippon, nihon and so on. Kaban means bag or briefcase. Kagi means keys. Ki, ki is used to denote tree or wood. It is a single syllable word. And then we have kitsune. Kitsune, again, it's not kitsune, it's kitsune. And it means the red wolf, which is found in Japan. Kirin, giraffe. Kimono, the famous Japanese dress worn by the Japanese ladies. Kimono. Kuchi, mu. Sorry, uh, the mouth. Kumo. Kumo is used uh, for spider and also for cloud. Kumo. Kusa, grass or weed. Kushi, skewer. Kutsu. Kutsu means shoes. Kudamono. Kudamono is fruits in general, like it can be any fruit. So fruits, kudamono. Keshigomo, eraser. Kesa. Kesa means this morning. Keitai, the mobile phone. Kono, this. Kocha. The special Japanese tea, which is the green tea and uh, nowadays green tea is available all over the world, but the origin is Japan. So kocha means the Japanese green tea. Kodomo, child. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa is used for uh, the generic hello or good day. Konbanwa. Konbanwa is for good evening. Sakana. Sakana means fish. Sara. Sara is a pan or a saucer. Saru. Saru means monkey. Same. The shark. Shark fish. Sake. Sake is a special kind of alcoholic drink. That is a specialty of Japan. So it's a Japanese liquor. Sake. Shika. Shika means deer. Shima. Shima is island. Shimauma is zebra. And we have seen that uma means horse. So this is basically the uh, the horse of the island and that is nothing but zebra. Shichi, the number seven. Shingo. Shingo means signal. Suika, watermelon. Sushi, the famous Japanese cuisine, which is made up of rice, seaweed, and there can be fish or crab or shrimp. So there is a, like a whole variety of sushi found uh, in the menu of Japanese restaurants. So this is the most popular and the most famous Japanese dish. Suzume. Sparrow. Sumo, the famous Japanese style of wrestling. Semi, the cicada. Sebiro, the business suit. Sentaki, washing machine. Sora, the sky. Soba, the special Japanese noodles. Tako, octopus. Tanuki, raccoon. Tans, it's a cabinet with drawers fitted. Tamago, egg. Takigi, firewood. Tatemono, tatemono means buildings. Chi, blood. Chikatetsu, chikatetsu means metro, metro rail. Chizu, chizu means map. Tsukue. Tsukue means table or a desk. Tsuru. The crane. Tsunami is, as you all know, it's a 
huge sea storm caused due to an earth earthquake under the ocean or the sea. Sun tsunami. Te hand. Tegami letter or mail. Tekagami the handheld mirror. Tengu. Tengu is a Japanese demon. Tebukuro gloves worn in hands. Tokage the lizard. Tora tiger. Tori bird. Nasu brinjal. Nabe utensils. Namida tears. Niji rainbow. Nuru to paint. Numa quicksand. Neji screw. Neko cat. Nodo throat. Ninjin. Ninjin means carrot. So here see the use of the consonant na two times. Ninjin means carrot. Nezumi rat. Nokogiri. Nokogiri is the past tense of C that is saw. Nogyo. Nogyo means agriculture or farming. Hana. So now let's uh, 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 Hana. Hana, if you give more stress on ha, then it will mean nose like Hana. Hana, that is nose. And if you give more stress on na, that is Hana. Hana, then it will mean flower. So this is the example of intonation that we discussed in the last lesson. So based on the stress on this label, the meaning changes. Hana is nose and Hana is flower. Hachi. Hachi, it can be number eight or it can be the B or honey bee. Hachi. So here there is no intonation and both the words, both the meanings will have the same pronunciation. Hachi. Hitsuji. Hitsuji means sheep. Hitsuji. Hasami. Hasami means scissors. Hige. Hige is beard. Fusuma. Fusuma is a special kind of door that is found in Japan. Like it's a traditional Japanese door. Fusuma. Hoki. Hoki means broom. Fune. The ship. Hoseki. Hoseki stands for jewels, pearls, stones, like jewelry and all. Hoseki. Hon. Hon means book. Mado. The window. Mikan. Orange. Mushi. Insects in general. Momo. The peach fruit. Mame. Beans. Me. Me means eyes. Mimi means ear. Mizu. Water. Megane. Spectacles. So in Japan, uh, you can see like lots of shops on the road and you will see this written Megane, like the spectacles shop or goggles shop. Matsuke, the eyebrows. Mimi Kazari, it's a very important word. Mimi Kazari, Mimi, as you can see, it's uh, it means ear and Kazari means to decorate, like something to decorate your ears. So this is earrings. Mimi means ear. Kazari means to decorate. So Mimi Kazari means earrings. Mizu Sashi. Again, this is a combined word of Mizu and Sashi. Mizu means water and Sashi means to give. So Mizu Sashi means something that gives water. So this is basically used for a water sprinkler. To give water to the plants. So Mizu Sashi, a water sprinkler. Yagi. Yagi is mountain sheep. Yuki, snow. Yuki Daruma, 
snowman. So Yuki means snow and Daruma means man. Yuki Daruma is snowman that children make during Christmas or New Year time. Yon, the number four. Yasai, vegetables in general. Yakitori. Yakitori is barbecue chicken. Yurei. Yurei stands for ghost. Rakuda. Rakuda is camel. Risu, the squirrel. Rei, the bell. Ringo, apple. Reizoku. Reizoku, this is the refrigerator or fridge. Renga, bricks. Wani, the alligator. Washi, eagle. Gaksei, gaksei means a student. Taigaku, taigaku means university. Nippon, nippon means Japan. So here you can see the use of double consonant, nippon. So double consonant that we have uh, learned during our hiragana lessons. So you can recall from there. If you have not watched that video, you can go back and watch that video. So nippon here we are using a double consonant. Beowin. Beowin, it stands for hospital and here you can see the blended sound. Beo. Similarly, curie. So these are all examples of blended sounds. Curie, which means cucumber. Tensha, the train. Reori, cooking. Tokyo, the Tokyo city. And Kyoto, the Kyoto city. So in all these words, you can see the blended sounds. This is Beo, this is Q. This is Sha, this is Ryo, this is Kyo, and this is again Kyo. Jiten Sha means bicycle. Kyo means today. Hyaku means hundred. Ryu, the Chinese dragon. Ryo Shusho, the receipt or the money receipt. So here again, these are examples of blended sounds. Sha, Kyo, Hya, Ryu. So here we have Ryo, Ryo, sh, sorry, it is Ryo, Shu, and Sho. Next we have some double consonant words. Kitte for stamp, Hapa for leaf, Gakko for school, Saka for author or writer, Keto for lineage or pedigree, Kakko for parenthesis, and Utta for the past tense of sell that is sold. So in each of these words, you can see this common symbol, which is a small Tsu symbol, which is also called Chisai Tsu. And this is used to represent uh, uh, a double consonant. So the sound that follows this small Tsu will give the effect of the double consonant. So Pa, it is preceded by the tsu, so it will give the sound hapa. The double p a sound will be produced by this half tsu and this pa hapa. So this is the rule of writing double consonant in Japanese. So friends, that was all for today. Hope you have now got some idea of some common Japanese words. We shall keep building such vocabulary in all our next lessons. So as we move ahead with lessons in every lesson, you will be learning some new words. So do revise the lessons that we have done so far. This was the eighth lesson. So before we come uh, come back with lesson nine. So I would advise you to go through all those eight lessons, revise them, practice them, both pronunciation and also write in your notebook, especially the hiragana alphabets should be memorized and written and practiced. And 
uh, we shall meet again in the next lesson soon with a uh, new one with some new topic. So till then, goodbye. Sayonara.